Hey there and welcome to another episode of FBS. I'm here today again with uh, B-School Housen. Hi, I'm usually not first. <laughs> Thrown off. <laughs> no, okay, well, no, no, no. I think yeah, you are right? actually, but yeah, whatever. We're stitching things off. Uh, Flux is also here. Hello. Uh, how's it going? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I'm, I'm, we're still looking at your gates uh, that Ooh. I think you're going to be addressing in, in the next yeah. episode, maybe. Got to get a shot in there of all the wrong gates just to, you know, really hammer that, that point home. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> by the way, we just literally recorded uh, the previous episode from, from Jay. And it's early-ish in the morning, so we all sound a little bit asleep. Just a little bit. So. It's not even early, though. It's like it's like noon for me. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I should be more awake than this. I just drank my coffee last episode, though. Like Throughout the episode, I was just sipping on some coffee, so I'm feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, mine, ha for some reason, hasn't yet kicked in all the way, you know? I don't know. I'm still feeling... It doesn't matter. We're, we should be talking about airport stuff, and uh, just decided to include some cinematics of some of the work that you guys have been oh. doing, and we're wow. jumping straight into Google Maps. This looks Google awesome. Maps. You did a ton of work. Territory. Wow. Look at all the yeah, props. Actually, yeah, actually, I should have... I should have gone with that joke. Yeah, like, look at all the work I did. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so detailed. So many props. How'd you, how'd you get the grass looking so good? It's just decals, man. Uh, it's all decals. And it's and actually a network. It's networks of grass clusters. Um, actually, that would be pretty awesome. That's... Oh, crap. It looks it looks like garbage now. What if yeah. they, like... <laughs> I'm what just kidding. They... I had to tone down the quality of the game because <laughs> my GPU yeah, you couldn't died. handle the FPS or the, the FPS. But... What what if we took the um because we have so we have like three different uh, theme mixer you know uh, options like the fertile ground we have the uh, the oil and something else and I was using them originally just to kind of like roughen up the grass and you can you can actually see it on mm -hmm. our grass texture but what if we took some of those like because you you saw in what was that was that LAX or something I don't know what, what that, that was, uh, was Minneapolis Minneapolis oh Minneapolis so I just noticed that they had a whole bunch of like kind of like dead looking um. Uh, like where the mower goes over, right? Like it kind of like wore down on the grass, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like we could get some of those textures that are like a little more hyper realistic and just like use like those as the ore texture or the oil texture or the fertile ground texture. I wonder if we could make like a really hyper realistic looking ground texture set for a theme mixer and just like play with that. Like I feel like that would really amp up the realism for all these runways. I don't know. I mean, it'd be really easy to do that or play around with it anyway. I wonder. Oh, if, it, if, it, it if it's easy to do, then by all means, go ahead and do it. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, guess I was going to say maybe we, should have, something here. <laughs> maybe we should have this conversation off camera, but now everyone knows that we're going to be doing this. Oh, so look at that. Great. I just signed myself up for something. Yeah, that, that's I can't okay, believe though. you agreed to do this, Flux. Uh, everyone knows now. Great. <laughs> I think it'd be pretty easy, honestly. I mean, it'd take like a, you know, Yeah, 10, it shouldn't be super hard, to... but yeah. I think I, mean, I might do that. Yeah. That's that's the that's exactly the same thought that I had when I started working on. By the way, today's episode is the cargo area. I was like, oh, this is gonna be easy. We're gonna get this done in an episode. Maybe another episode where I just detail a few things. Uh, no, uh, this no. I ended up How? I ended up finishing like sixty percent of this build. It's a huge, huge build. How uh, have we not learned this yet? Yeah, no, I, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, How I'm like I'm so a bit oblivious to everything. <laughs> I guess I, I made this mistake when I did the maintenance hub at the back. I'm like, oh, it's fine. It'll be easy. We all cumulatively made this mistake when we thought that an airport would be an easy six-part mini-series. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what was that all about? What were we thinking? I, I, I must say, though, we're, we're getting a little bit faster now that we know what we're doing. Oh, yeah. Like, doing definitely. things for the first time is usually what yes. takes up a ton of time. Mm -hmm. um, oh, but crap, um, This thing is huge. Yeah, oh, my it, God. It is pretty big. Uh, and in fact, so what I was going to say on that first clip that we totally talked over <laughs> and like changed <laughs> subjects, uh, what I was doing there in, in, in the Google Maps uh, shot is measuring the platform area or the ramp area for uh, the cargo section of the Minneapolis airport just to get some of the, measure, the measurements down for this one. And that's when I when I realized that, oh man, this is actually way bigger than what I thought it'd be. And it's not so much the footprint of the building but the fact that then you have to detail that that's usually what the, the big problem is because um, otherwise it looks a little bit sparse and uh, I must say I mean I guess I'll, I'll tell you right now by the end of this episode I won't be able to touch the I guess the taxiway or the runway side of things of this belt I'm mostly going to be focusing on 
the distribution centers and the warehouses that are going to be sitting right next to it. That's the big concrete slab, by the way. And I decided to sort of split it into areas, one that's kind of curvy to give it a bit more, you know, pizzazz. Pizzazz. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I also spent a lot of time, way more than I thought I, I would do, uh, just tweaking the runways and the taxiways on this side, the, this boulder band that I've been I guess criticized a couple times by the way I say that because I don't speak Dutch apparently <laughs> who would have thought right um, but uh, it's been a lot of time like adding all the, uh, the the lines that were missing the taxiway lines also the uh, signs the runway signs uh, mm. props all pretty much throughout in fact I think that it still needs a few more but oh, yeah, uh, I was like does. okay I spend like uh, by the way this whole episode took me like 30 hours to, to do like build time again it's, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. It's yeah. Not. It, it was fun, but it was crazy. <laughs> I realize now, in retrospect, that I'm a little bit insane. Um, but uh, I'm I'm happy with how this whole thing is looking. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm pretty excited. I think uh, it's once it's finished. It's like I realize that it's one of these builds. Oh, by the way, I fixed that. I got a lot of comments uh, from from that runway having the wrong the wrong labels, even though the actual district had the right name, but. You know, uh, there's so many details that kind of you can't keep track of that mm -hmm. eventually in the comments, people tell you, hey, you need to fix this thing uh, or this other thing. And then I go and do it. Um, and this is me putting all these uh, numbers, uh, as I was uh, mentioning before. Um, what I was saying is it, this this is going to be one of these builds that as you work on it, I don't know if this happened to you guys, but uh, sometimes when you're tackling on these huge projects, as you're working on them, you like look at them, you like stop every, I don't know, let's say 15, 20 minutes and look at it. It's like, oh, this just doesn't, uh, looks a little mm -hmm. bit weird. But then after like 60, 70% completion, it like, it magically, is, everything like sort of clicks together mm -hmm. and it starts to like look really, really nice and more realistic. And uh, this is going to be one of these, uh, one of these projects where right now, or at least for most of this episode it's just gonna look weird but once i start putting down the parking lots and the buildings and some placeholder planes just everything sort of comes together much more nicely so i guess brace yourselves for that <laughs> brace yourselves <laughs> yeah pretty much um so based on what uh, jay did in the previous episode um, I'm going to be using a similar technique instead of using uh, ronix uh, ronix's docks which are buildings I switched gears a little bit, and I'm, I'm slowly going to start working with uh, props, which uh, I know, yeah, we're, I'm going to I'm going to be covering this whole thing with props. It's going to be insane. I am, however, going to live like leave one tiny corner of it, or at least one big chunk of it, uh, with docks, just to give it a bit more texture. Uh, so it's not everything sort of uniform, the same type of material. Uh, if you look at airports and Google Maps. Uh, and you totally should if you're building one. Uh, that's where we get most of the ideas. And that's also why I included that first uh, clip. You maybe should regardless. They're cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're just so mesmerizing. Actually, but totally random. But I was, uh, we just got an Apple TV at uh, the office, like a brand new one. And it has the screensaver with uh, videos, uh, with drone shots. I don't know if you've seen that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is LAX, like top-down LAX for like, uh, I think it's like 10 minutes. I'm, I'm going to include a link in the description because you can actually watch this online. It's it's mesmerizing. Like seriously, you can see all these planes landing and, oh, I just hit my mic. You can see the planes landing and uh, and the cars driving by. It's like, it's so gorgeous and it's so detailed. I think it's like 4K. Uh, so you, wow. yeah, definitely wow. go check it out. I'm going to include again, a link in the description. Oh my God, this is so many props. <laughs> Holy I know. Shit. It wasn't that many actually. Uh, I counted them. I think it was like, I don't know, like 3K, maybe 4K. I mean, it is a lot, but But it's a big area too. So. Much. It, they do cover quite a bit of crown so it wasn't too bad and then i'm gonna clean up some of these too so it's not gonna be all that many um but what i was originally saying is that many of these uh places have uh, just a variety of uh materials because uh well they may have built this area of the airport at a certain time but then over time as maintenance needs to be uh, done on, on this uh, construction. They sometimes upgrade to better materials or just whatever material they had at the time. So you just see patches 
of different types of concretes from different eras. Think of this as like the rings in a tree kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a weird way to put it. Oh, no, that's a great analogy. Yeah, it's like yeah. exactly what it is. Um, so I was trying to play uh, with that a little bit. Now, uh, after just recently watching uh, Jay's video, I noticed that you use like darker docs and I tried a few of them, but I couldn't quite get darker versions of this. I don't know if maybe it's the lot that I'm using or the light settings, but these ones uh, look significantly brighter than yours. I I don't quite know, because uh, I was thinking about that as well. Some of them, so I think there are like four different color shades, uh, and I think you only, you managed to pick the corrugated and then the flat of like I, I put them all down. There's similar. so many of them, and I couldn't get anything huh. that's darker than this. I think it's just light settings, yeah. Yeah, I should oh. probably go double check that. By the way, we can't. It's been uh, what twenty one episodes, and we can't get the lights to sync up between sync, things. Yeah. We kind of gave up on that a, a few episodes ago. I don't know if you noticed. Um, so I guess every yeah every episode of ours is like its own experience to some degree. Which Whoa! Did you just fun. lower those underneath? That was like genius level play right there. What? Wow! Oh yeah, you so like, that I could do things. Them all so you could work on yeah. them. Yeah. Wow, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, I. I I had the same problem that Jay did, uh, where you put down all these props and then you can't you do anything <laughs> yeah. because the selection tool, it's like always in the way. Uh -huh. Okay, so here's where it gets interesting. Um, the couple things. I wanted to, to do, uh, uh, or one thing I noticed uh, is that uh, all these uh, warehouses and airports, they do have a direct connection to the uh, to like the public roads. In fact, all of the inner roads are, for the most part, public roads. In fact, in Minneapolis, you can street view pretty much all the way to like the runway. So, in, in fact, they have a, a, a an area there for like plane spotters, which I thought it was kind of cool, and I might add that in a future episode, or if you guys feel like doing that in your episodes, uh, I think that that would be a cool idea. It's just like a little chunk of cement that overlooks the runway, so that people can take photos <laughs> and videos of things and fly their drones, maybe. No, Ooh. don't don't do that. Don't fly your drone in an airport. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't want to give people ideas, but um, uh, in any case, the the point that I was trying to make is these roads that kind of go through all these buildings uh, are public, and because they're public, they tend to be fenced out um, so that people can easily access the runway. Um, but it's weird because it's like little cages that go in between the runways uh, where anyone can just walk in and, or walk through but not really get to the planes or you get pretty close to the place but not quite. So in a moment you're going to see me add a whole bunch of uh, network of roads that kind of go under. There's like tunnels underneath all these taxiways which are pretty realistic. And I know I've, I've gotten some comments like uh, saying that that doesn't look very realistic in previous videos where, where I tried a similar thing. But they do. Uh, in Minneapolis primarily there's just tunnels everywhere. Uh, and that's just one of the many airports that I've been looking at uh, when I was working on this uh, episode. So yeah, I don't want to see any comments saying that that is unrealistic because it is very much realistic. It's not. I want to see every comment saying that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get a lot of comments now that I literally mentioned that. <laughs> oh man, that's um, the the YouTube equivalent of come at me. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man, why did I even? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna blip all that out. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not. Uh, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Um, Actually, I was I was talking. We're just talking off camera that at, at this point in the series, I feel like people that are like really into planes are mostly watching this. So, uh, oh, they, I thought they you know, were gonna tell. They know how how airports look like across the world, and they will let us know when we're missing things up. So, oh, they will, uh, yeah, yeah. I thought you were gonna say at this point in this series, we're not taking any feedback anymore. <laughs> I was like, oh, straight. we certainly are. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah, and it, I think it's kind of nice. I love, I always love like learning new things about airports, like through my comments. Cause I, I mean, I, I try my best to, to research stuff when I'm working on it. And I, I've kind of like, I've done a lot of the same stuff the last few episodes in my own projects. I know we were talking about that off camera as well, like kind of changing up what we're doing. Cause I think next episode I need to do some work on uh, like a fuel station or something. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I try to like go on Google Maps and, and learn the best I can about the way things work. But I always like, hearing comments uh, about from people who actually work in airports or you know know more about that that specific thing that i'm working on because I, I feel like i learn a lot like i feel like i've learned so much about airports in this like single project like way more than i've ever known before which was like hardly anything i think going into what's, this 
What's your favorite new fact? Favorite new fact? Wow. Man, there's a lot. I mean, well, for one thing, I didn't know anything about, like, runway orientation, and that was, like, super cool to learn. Like, I, I didn't realize that there was so much that went into, like, you know, like, the way that runways are, are designed so that if there's, like, winds in certain directions, then they can just switch to different runways, and, and it's all fine. Like, I didn't realize that was, you know, I mean, obviously it has to be taken into account, but I didn't realize the extent at which that was, you know, a part of the design. That's kind of cool. And the numbering schemes are kind of cool, too. Um, and uh, I guess that should be obvious to most people, like the way that they use, you know, L and R and they have like, you know, they just invert or they have, you know, the same number. Yeah, I didn't know any of that, but that's kind of cool, too, I guess. I don't know. I learned I learned the meaning of FBO. Right, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> I learned it like five or six times, but still can't remember it. <laughs> Uh, I don't know it either. I, I was gonna, I was gonna like interject with the actual name, but I don't know it either. So <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I don't think any of us actually knows. Um, it's fixed, fixed base operator. One, one, actually, one thing that we haven't, that I don't think we ever mentioned on camera is that we we've gotten a lot of, uh, or at least I've I've gotten several emails from people who work at, and and more than one uh, person who worked at airports all over the world that giving us uh, free advice if we if we wanted to by the way thank you uh, all the everyone who, who actually uh, wrote to us and and absolutely and yeah. offered uh, help we we are consulting with a lot of we have a staff of, of airport <laughs> experts that we consult to but sometimes <laughs> quick, it's though. yeah no it's true I'm not I'm not that that's not a joke by the way it's totally um, not a joke yeah, yeah. No. But, but I, what, uh, what are you airport people I'm I'm all over the country all the time so uh, can anybody hook me up with a tour yeah actually that'd be Ooh. great right I'll, I'll include it. I'll I'll put that in an episode or something. Let's go. Wait, if, dude, if, if, so any, cool. if everyone if anyone who's watching works at LAX, uh, I'll be happy to vlog the crap out of that. Like seriously, yeah, I'll, look, I'll go to LAX too. Yeah, it's fine. I I I will go at any airport west of the Rocky Mountains if you're down to give me a tour. <laughs> Honestly, I would like when I'm when I'm back in Utah, I would I would drive for that. Like if we were gonna do like a like an FBS hangout, like go to you an airport. Fly for that. I, I would fly for that. Or to that, It'd I actually guess. be the same cost, honestly. Like, the, the the tickets from, like, SLC to anywhere on the West Coast are almost cheaper than driving. Because you have I'll to get lunch pro. next weekend? Next weekend. Yeah, that fly on be... out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we, well, I mean, we should probably wait for someone to actually, like, get in touch with us so that we can... Uh, yeah. Well, no, I was just saying, just, like, come on, come on over for lunch. If it's lunch, I'm driving. I, I can't... Uh, just San for Francisco? lunch? You're driving all the way to, from Utah just for lunch? <laughs> I mean, what is that like? Twelve hours, ten hours? <laughs> we'll make it a That's, weekend. <laughs> sure, yeah, a long lunch weekend. Uh, by the way, before everyone yells to me in the in the comments, I need to address something that's happening on the screen right now. Uh, Jay already like yelled at yelled me at for him. this. <laughs> um, so I'm putting down a train track, I, and I had the same idea that Flux had in the previous episode that oh, it would be so cool to to have like a, a like a multi model like freight train thing connected to airplanes and jay was like no that's not a thing mm, uh is it really would, not? You, would you care to explain why that's not a thing jay well it's it removes a I'm trying to try to figure out a good definition or a good way to it looks so say good, it for, by the way. it looks super cool and i felt really bad because you posted this like done and you're like hey how's this look i'm like uh-oh uh but i'm removing all this later by the way trains right, so. and airplanes kind of fill the same long distance transport need mm. uh, for one and you it doesn't make a ton of sense to use all the awesome high speededness of air freight to go and have your package sit in a train yard for a week yeah. until it can get on the right train to go somewhere or even for a day or two uh, as well as the fact is just standards aren't really as standardized <laughs> I guess I couldn't figure out a better word uh, between planes and trains. Trains and ships and trains and trucks are very standard on the uh, your standard shipping container. But mm -hmm. your plane ver like your planes have to use those ones we were talking about last episode the with the corner yeah. cut, the, the what yeah, and those are I think they're called ULD containers or something. I can't remember. Um, but what does that stand it, for? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was mean. Uh, anyway, um, but it's just not quite it doesn't. It doesn't make a lot of sense to connect rail to airports. With that said, uh, Charlotte Airport has one of my favorite weird rail components. In that, just between the runways, I guess because there was space, there's a functional intermodal train yard. 
where they move containers from trains to trucks just in the airport. But it's just but adjacent, it's, not just really adjacent, integrated not with. Yeah, but by adjacent, I mean surrounded by on all sides. Like, <laughs> yeah. Whoa. You, you taxi, if you land on a certain runway, you taxi on a bridge over this train track with the train yard. But huh. it, it, you're right, it is not uh, incorporated. I doubt there are many things going from rail to air. And uh, that, that, that actually makes like a ton of sense too, because I, I just watched like a, a documentary on it was like FedEx and UPS and like their the way that they can like do one day shipping, because <clears throat> obviously it's like, that's like crazy to think about, and it's insane that their entire like system for this is like done through like bigger hubs and then smaller hubs and then trucks, and they can do all of that like by using like running basically the same flights every single day and yep. like having this very precise time at like four in the morning where they do all the, like the you know from the hub they break down and like you know sort all the packages off of the main flights from like you know international and then they send them immediately on flights all across the country to like smaller hubs and then all of those can send to trucks and there's no trains involved whatsoever it's all it's all mm -hmm. trucks and it's all planes and it's mostly planes it's kind of amazing like so I, they they used ahead. to be yeah. trains did as we as we get super far off topic from this FBS video, it's fun. Uh, until until like 2005, Amtrak ran these box cars on the ends of all their trains for express shipping, mm -hmm. and then the freight companies that basically had were forced to give Amtrak priority in exchange for the government running Amtrak trains, which don't make any money. Uh, said, "Hey, wait a minute! You can't have Amtrak trains in our business too. We're not going to give priority to a competitor on our line." Mm -hmm. So Amtrak said, "Ugh, that's annoying," uh, and had to stop doing this very profitable business. Did they business. really say, ah, oh, that's annoying? Probably. <laughs> like that? In the official <laughs> documentation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they they said, they went and they had to stop, but then what was really kind of annoying is the freight railroads didn't then implement an express freight service at all. So they basically went and took all of this. They had a fantastic contract with U.S. Mail. Uh, and up until 2005 or so, a lot of mail, of express mail, was shipped by Amtrak. Uh, and now it's shipped, uh, I think, honestly, a decent amount is shipped by air, even not, quote-unquote, air mail. Mm -hmm. um, nice signs. Thank you. Yeah, they, they, yeah these are great. Really I, I love I love making these and, and putting them down and everything. <laughs> mm. <laughs> by the way, uh, sorry, before we go totally off topic, I have, uh, and this is kind of off topic anyways, but I have a definition for ULD. It's unit oh. low device, and according to Wikipedia, oh. there's 900,000 of those in service uh, right now. Oh my God! That's according so many. to the IATA, that's pretty impressive. Uh, and there, uh, I think the cost is it says uh, $1,100 each. So wow! To, to buy them? Like, I think so. Yeah, I mean that's what it says here. I don't know. Yeah. All all of a sudden, I need a few. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I need a couple. Um, <laughs> so uh, going going back to the build, I mean, if you're interested in that. I've been uh, putting down uh, a few uh, natural disasters assets, interestingly enough. Um, I put two heli heliports, one medical heliport. Actually, I'm going to put that right now and wow. right this second. That was Good timing. Great. Yeah, that was perfect timing. <laughs> and I put another police one, just uh, a few, uh, I guess, game miles from, from actually like half a mile from this one. Um, and they, they're actually pretty good assets as, as long as you remove the ugly parking lots that come built in with it. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, we should probably sink our like, our prop, uh, what was it called? The uh, prop, prop, up, uh, prop remover up. mod? Yeah. can't remember the name. Uh, Mine I, never sinks. I just have to do it all manually. Like, no, I no, watch, it is, I literally it is go back. It's is local. it local? Yeah, it's local. I, mine resets for some reason whenever I try and change that. So I've literally just like watched your episodes and then gone in and done the same things to mine. Like that's how I've done it for the last wow. like however many times you've done it yeah i usually I do why. it when something looks odd on a build that you did or at least i ask you hey like jay did you mean to leave these weird parking lots in the middle of the runway and he probably was like <laughs> no or yes yes i did <laughs> yes, yes I did. actually it's this really weird thing they have it only very specifically at burbank <laughs> <laughs> you know, offload parking to runways you know exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and um Basically, the, the whole idea behind all these uh, warehouses and distribution centers uh, that we have here is um, they have, I've, I've been using uh, Avania's uh, assets almost exclusively. Those are like the best ones I found. And we're actually having this discussion off camera too on 
I figured the workshop would be full of like semi-modern warehouses. That's actually not true at all. There's a lot of really good looking ones that are, you know, like old brick facing facades type things. But uh, these like modern ones, like corrugated metal type uh, buildings are not that, they're not that many. And the ones that are there are mostly like not great looking in my opinion. Oh, or they're like hugely oversized as we talked about in the previous episode. So I, I did my best to sort of mix some of those together. Uh, in fact, I would say that most of these warehouses are not very much designed for airport because they all have these like uh, truck parking lanes and entrances that uh, you wouldn't necessarily have facing the planes on the other side. So I had to do a lot of uh, hacking, I guess, to some degree to make them look uh, a little bit nicer and more integrated with, with everything else. But I think I did a pretty good job of that. Uh, none of this will actually be finished, unfortunately, in this episode. It's going to look mostly detailed, but not quite. So uh, in the next one, I'm definitely going to be finishing. So if you see anything that's weird or that doesn't quite belong, I might still fix it in the next episode. And then if I don't fix it in the next episode, I guess you can complain and you know, usual <laughs> things. Please feel free. Yeah. Uh, also over here, I'm, I'm working on uh, this security entrances. I have a lot of uh, gates that uh, sort of connect the, the service roads in the airport with the actual public roads, and I needed to do something that make it look like, you know, no one can just like freely come in and do whatever. Uh, there's going to be more of those added in the next episode, but I added just a couple here so that you get an idea on how these things are going to look like. Now, I'm putting down all these uh, signs that uh, I guess tied all these uh, warehouses together with one another. Uh, so far, and this is I guess more of a question to you, Jay, we only have two cargo companies uh, in terms yes. of planes. Uh, we have Mori Morita or Morita mm -hmm. and uh, Flugline and uh, or Fluglini. I think. When when should we expect the next ones to come out? Uh, 2020. 2020. Oh no. <laughs> no, um, I'm working on them. As as we do, I'm like slowly growing the new plane rebuilds and things. So unfortunately, freight airplanes are usually huge. So it might be a little while before we get so as unique of tails sitting in this cargo ramp. Good God, that's giant. Yeah, I know. It's pretty uh, big. I know, right? Th this shot pretty much says it all. It says it all. Yeah. It's so big. As, as we're going through the cinematics, uh, I just want to thank you guys uh, for watching. We usually go over and talk about the cinematics, but uh, I, I don't remember when I actually caught it down <laughs> to, so uh, I don't know when to stop. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. If you did, uh, please consider giving this video a like. That's uh, very much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel and haven't already, please consider subscribing not only to me, but also to Flux and to Jay. And uh, the next episode will definitely be again on Flux's channel. Uh, and uh, I highly encourage you to go check that out next week. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all for now. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. More cargo planes before the series end, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but I might be cutting it close. <laughs>
God, new graphics, right? Yep, new graphics. New graphics. I'm saying this so you can include it in the video. <laughs> They're slick. Thanks. And I guess if we're gonna be, if you're gonna include this, it's crazy how not good this this old title sequence airport looked. <laughs>